Hey, it's Mike here, and today, vinegar. It might be a processed food, which might make you think that it's automatically unhealthy and evil, like some other processed foods, but nope. In this case, it breaks all of the rules and has a slew of health benefits. You might have heard a little bit about some, but we're gonna go into a bunch of different interesting ones and research on those benefits that you probably haven't heard. Now, we'll talk about areas that I just didn't expect, like PCOS and depression, but also we'll look into some mechanisms on some more basic subjects like weight loss and blood sugar and insulin and cholesterol and that good stuff. We're also gonna be asking questions like, what is the best type of vinegar? Which one has the most antioxidants? And really, what is vinegar anyway? Let's just get to it. And just super duper fast, this video is sponsored by Thrive Market. And if you click my link below, you can get 30% off your first order, as well as a free gift worth up to 60 bucks. All right, now vinegar, is again a processed food and it's actually at the point where by certain definitions it, it almost becomes a ultra processed food from this paper it does match some characteristics like typically contain no whole foods check they typically are not recognized as versions of food you wouldn't be able to tell that apple cider vinegar is from an apple. And I will say in general, I mean, I'm espousing a whole food vegan diet. I'm all about getting as many whole foods as you can in there, but we have to just face the music sometimes and look at what the research says about perhaps a certain outlier food. And in this case, it's vinegar. I can see the headlines now. Mike the vegan goes against his own recommendations to avoid processed food and recommends one. Let's burn his whole food vegan cookbook. Oh wait, it's digital, you can't. <laughs> all right, real fast. Let's learn more about what vinegar actually is because I do think that's important. You already know it's acidic and in particular, it's acetic acid and it's not 100% acetic acid that you're tending to eat. Usually vinegars that you buy are like four to 8% of that acid and the rest is water. So yeah, maybe some of the health benefits we're gonna learn are just from people finally getting hydrated in a society where they drink like no water. <laughs> I'm kidding, it actually is the acetic acid. So the question is, how is it actually made? Well, most but not all is actually taken from a carbohydrate product that is then fermented into alcohol, which we know is not healthy, and then taken a step further by using acetobacter bacteria and that turns the alcohol into acetic acid. And fun fact, vinegar actually comes from these two words. Vinaigre. Which is pronounced that way, which is actually French for whale pee. Now you know. I'm joking, it's French for sour wine. So you know some dude just let his wine go way too far but he desperately wanted to drink it anyway. And he did. Blech, what is this? It tastes like whale pee. And why is my blood sugar stabilizing? And another interesting thing from a macronutrient perspective is you have those carbohydrates, which are initially you know, up to four calories per gram when they're refined. And then that goes into alcohol, which is up to seven calories per gram. And then that's further processed into vinegar, which is about three and a half calories per gram. But again, this is super interesting because we're taking a literal carcinogen alcohol, processing it further, and then boom, all of a sudden, it's, it's health benefits. <laughs> Nature, you jokester. Now, are all vinegars created equal? Well, a lot of outlets will actually point to the antioxidant benefits of vinegar. However, they're not responsible for a lot of the direct effects. Of course, they are beneficial. So we can look at which vinegar has the highest antioxidant content. Starting with a study like this one, you can see that, yeah, apple doesn't do quite as well as grape-derived vinegar, and it's likely just to do with the starting antioxidant level. Beyond that, there is actually insane variation, even depending on the brand. We can look at this study and this chart, which has a widespread breakdown of vinegars and their antioxidant you know, power. And you can see that red wine vinegar is better than white wine and that real Italian Medina balsamic vinegar crushes it with you know about two and a half times the antioxidant power of the red wine vinegar. Garlic. Onions, garlic, celery, balsamic vinegar. Tomato paste. That's a big word for Elmo. And in case you're wondering the process for making that Italian vinegar, yes, here's a clip of it. It does involve barrels just as you would think. But I said vinegar is usually from alcohol, but in the case of balsamic vinegar, they actually just put that acetobacter right into some crushed grapes and they let that do its work. So it's a different process and that can be aged for up to even decades and it slowly becomes more thick and syrupy. And so we have a large spectrum of you know how expensive and how potent balsamic vinegar can be. 
But because of that type of processing, it likely still has some carbohydrates in it. And we also have another interesting one here, strawberry vinegar, which from this study, yeah, does have about the same antioxidant capacity as balsamic vinegar. And finally, if you're into the apple cider vinegar, we'll cover some studies on that. From this study, it appears that artisanal apple cider vinegar, you know, has about twice as much antioxidant capacity as industrial apple cider vinegar. Okay, now a quick break from our sponsor, Thrive Market, which if you didn't know, is a online membership-based market, which has a bunch of food options as well as cosmetics, etc. Something I always have to point out about Thrive is that you can just search based off the category of vegan, which can be super convenient for new vegans, and also people that might live in sort of like vegan specialty dead zones and they really wanna try out some cool vegan products, they've added a lot on there, even frozen meals, like ones by the tag tattooed chef. And here is what I got, some nice snacks to share with people. Got a bunch of super delicious stuff, some things I haven't tried, some things that are my old classic favorites, like raw walnut butter. I was gonna try this vegan tuna. And even though I didn't go crazy with a huge order, I still saved 11 bucks. And I checked and they do actually have balsamic vinegar from Modena, Italy, which is cool. And they also have this interesting blueberry vinegar that I'm sad that I didn't order this time. And I need to mention that orders over $49 ship free and those are from their zero waste facilities using carbon neutral shipping, which is awesome. And as far as that membership goes, if you do get an annual membership, it comes out to you know just $5 a month, which is great. And if you do wanna try Thrive Market, you can use the link below, which is just thrivemarket.com slash Mike the Vegan for 30% off your first order and that free gift that is worth up to 60 bucks. All right. All right, now I wanna start on the health effects. And I know some of you are probably aware that this is a benefit, but there are some interesting nuances and you know potential mechanisms here that are worth looking at. Just for the main claim, this 2017 meta-analysis found that vinegar blunts the blood sugar and insulin spikes after meals in both healthy and diabetic individuals. In fact, it can work almost too well on people with diabetes. They need to make sure their blood sugar isn't brought down lower than they want it to be. And just to look at a study in particular, this one looked at type two diabetic patients and yeah, it blunted the blood sugar spike after a high glycemic meal specifically. You can just see that chunk taken out, which is huge. But then a low glycemic meal didn't see a difference really, which is an interesting thing to note. And they found the same thing for insulin. It comes down much faster with that vinegar, which is cool. But what about markers that aren't meal dependent? Is it just an acute effect that happens quickly? Well, to this 2020 meta-analysis out of Singapore, taking vinegar also resulted in significantly better fasting blood glucose and hemoglobin A1C level, which again is a marker of your blood sugar levels for the last three months or so. And now let's put a little bit of thought into what the mechanism here could be. You know, antioxidants might be one you think of. Well, a lot of these vinegars have like no antioxidants and yet they are still having a positive effect. It's also the idea that it might delay stomach emptying. It might delay the digestion of starches. However, we have a study here that sort of slaps that idea in the face. This is one that showed that taking vinegar at night lowered the blood sugar in the next morning of people with diabetes. Now, clearly that vinegar isn't still right in their system with any food that they're eating and not even having food yet, yet their blood sugar is lower. And also the previous meta-analysis on after meal levels did look at gastric emptying and didn't find a difference. But that vinegar at night study says, hey, this might actually be from altering the glycolysis slash gluconeogenic cycle, that's creation of new glucose in the liver, which may benefit diabetic individuals with metabolic disturbances contributing to a pre-breakfast rise in fasting glucose, also known as the dawn phenomenon. That's a really good band name. I, I reserve that band name. It also might just help with glucose uptake directly. We have this study that looked at the glucose uptake take in the arms of people with type 2 diabetes. And here's a fascinating chart where the black dotted line is the vinegar group, white is placebo, and you can see, yeah, it's taking up more glucose. By the way, the study also confirms that blunting of after meal glucose and insulin, as you can see by these two charts, kabloom, better. 
with vinegar. And to get an answer on the mechanism of why your body might be taking up more glucose with vinegar, we have to look at the research on weight loss here. And we have a few studies. We got this 2009 Japanese studies on individuals with obesity, which found that it did help people lose about two kilograms or four pounds of weight. And here we actually have, no. <laughs> Instead of writing chart of fat loss, I wrote chart of fat loss. How did it not autocorrect that? But you have your vinegar and your placebo group, and then you have on the bottom subcutaneous, visceral fat, and total fat. Yeah, doing pretty good. Placebo losing none. Next, we have this 2018 randomized control trial, higher quality study using apple cider vinegar. And they found that by 12 weeks, the apple cider vinegar group had lost four kilograms or 8.8 .8 pounds, which is no joke. Another important metric that they looked at was appetite. And you can just see by this bar chart, the bars on the left are vinegar. You know, you see a drop in appetite, but I have to note that this wouldn't lead to any of those blood sugar effects that we saw earlier because a lot of those matched the meals and yet found the benefit with vinegar. You know, same amount of calories, you get it. And all of this might be due to a particular pathway called AMPK, AMP activated protein kinase, which has to do with energy. In simpler terms, it's been referred to as the master regulation switch of your metabolism. No big deal. You know, it can control glucose usage, some fat storage, the creation of new mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. And it gets activated more with exercise is something you would wanna be more activated in that sense. And so a very interesting study along those lines is a randomized control trial using pomegranate vinegar, which found not only a subcutaneous weight loss, but the activation of AMPK in the women in this study. So vinegar might actually be signaling some changes in metabolism, which is super interested, and I can't wait for more research on that. But on the topic of women, we have to cover a very interesting study on PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I've done whole videos about if you're curious about it. But again, we have that insulin stabilizing effect, and there's a big insulin connection with PCOS. And so we have this 2013 Japanese study which found that vinegar regulated the menstrual cycle, actually resumed it in some of these patients. They did 15 grams of apple cider vinegar in 100 milliliters of water every day. Six out of seven had improved insulin resistance and four out of seven had their menstrual cycle resumed after 40 days or less. Now let's hit some more heart disease risk factors. Obviously high blood sugar can lead to oxidation in the arteries, which is not good, but we covered that. So let's look at blood pressure. We have this meta-analysis, finding that vinegar had a dose-dependent relationship with blood pressure, more vinegar, lower blood pressure. The researchers went as far as to say, quote, clinicians should incorporate vinegar consumption as part of their dietary advice for patients. Also, in case you're wondering, no, these aren't all funded by big vinegar. There's not really a lot of money to be made in vinegar, it appears. You know, these are largely funded by institutions, no conflicts of interest, unless you find some. I didn't see any. And yeah, the cost to be taking this amount of vinegar in these studies, we're just talking cents per day. And from this study, this blood pressure connection could also be related to AMPK pathway. However, the study was just in rats, so more data needed. Also jumping way back to one of the earlier meta-analyses, they found the secondary effect of lowering LDL cholesterol. What? Quote, there was a remarkable reduction in total cholesterol and LDL post-intervention. That's pretty awesome. And now for you know a surprising finding in an area I wasn't expecting, and that is depression. We have, yeah, it's a randomized control trial, but it's a little bit on the smaller side with 27 people. So we need to repeat it. But in healthy college students, they found that depression scores dropped by about 20 to 30%, you know, depending on which scoring method they used. And they actually used one you might have seen in the grocery store, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, but again, no conflicts of interest here. Despite the company having something to brag about, I went there, it's okay, the video's almost over. And we also have just the surface application of vinegar and what it can do. One which is interesting just has to do with salads and salmonella from this study. Vinegar mixed with lemon juice, so not just vinegar, you know, after 30 minutes, just brought salmonella down to undetectable levels 
Can you wait 30 minutes? Would your greens just melt as well? I'm not sure. Seems to help though. And then another one is if you have athlete's foot, you can soak the toe section of your socks and just wear that and help improve athlete's foot. I mean, you know, whatever keeps you being an athlete. But finally, I do wanna really quickly touch on myths and risks surrounding vinegar. The main risk here just seems to be the acidity and the effects that that can have. People taking it straight, it can like burn your throat if people have, you know, stomach acid problems. And then of course the enamel of your teeth need to be protected. So somebody like Dr. Gregor, shout out to him for making some vinegar videos that helped inspire this one. He recommends always taking it with food, never taking it alone for those reasons. And his official recommendation is actually two teaspoons with every meal of the day. So he's like all about vinegar. And then in terms of myths, there's just a lot of sort of woo woo claims around apple cider vinegar in particular, you know, as like a treatment for cancer. Obviously it's not gonna be an effective treatment for cancer. I don't even know what to tell you. Vinegar is associated with lower esophageal cancer rates, which is cool, but an association like that is not enough to be a treatment. I mean, you know, stopping smoking lowers the risk of lung cancer. Obviously it's not a treatment for lung cancer. You know, rough analogy there. Yeah, in the end, vinegar continues to surprise me. It's just this processed food that out of nowhere is super healthy. I mean, you know, you take carbs, you refine them into refined sugar, bad. Heck, take the holes off of brown rice and they increase diabetes risk for white rice versus brown rice, which lowers it and on and on. But then vinegar, healthy. But that is crazy. Take a carbohydrate, refine it, keep refining it, and then it lowers the blood sugar response, lowers the insulin response, helps with things like PCOS and weight loss. No, you're not gonna have massive weight loss benefits, but you know we have evidence that it's upregulating that AMPK metabolic pathway directly from that pomegranate study. And again, helping things like blood pressure and cholesterol, it just keeps going. So I'm happy that I finally made a vinegar video because I learned a lot. And of course, if you would like to try out Thrive Market, you can you know click my link below and automatically get 30% off your first order. And that free gift, again, worth up to 60 bucks, which is awesome. So thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on vinegar. Are you gonna be using more of it now? I know I am. Feel free to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Vinegre. Which actually mean Vin Diesel in French. <laughs>